have been swallowed by a fat guy. <laughs> Charlene, my guest of honor is this wonderful man I met at a charity benefit last night. His name is Mason Dodd, as in Mason Dodd Imports. Yeah. His family's just rich, rich, rich. But he went out and made another fortune on his own. And the best part is, I've got him interested in giving us merchandise on consignment, plus anything we want for ourselves at 25% off wholesale. I'm talking Baccarat crystal and the best Chinese porcelain. So, I collect thimbles. Why are you getting in my face? <laughs> well, because you're going to be Mason's date. Oh, no, just a minute. If he's so wonderful, you'd be going out with him yourself. Well, he didn't ask me. As my first husband, Dash Goff, the writer, used to say, there are some mountains so majestic even brave men dare not approach. No, I'm sorry. There's something fishy here. Besides, I've been fixed up before. It never works. Ladies, hope I'm not interrupting. <clears throat> Mason Dodd, you sweet man, get in here. You're so wonderful to come all this way just for me. Well, I felt I had to after you threatened to kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I asked Mason to come and take a look at our inventory so he can get an idea of the kind of merchandise we carry. <laughs> and, of course, he's going to let us order things for ourselves, too. Uh, Mason, that's my sister, Julia. Hi. That's Hi. Mary Jo. And this is Charlene. Hi. There's a rumor going around that Suzanne's going to try to force you to have dinner with me. Oh, well, she did mention something. I could tell by the look on your face she forgot to mention my height. What's wrong with your height? It's too low for my width. <laughs> Come on, don't tell me you didn't notice. No, I noticed. Well, I, for one, think you two are absolutely perfect together. <laughs> Mason, why don't you take her to lunch and get to know her better? Oh, it's a great idea, Suzanne. Why don't you ask her for me? Well, I don't know. Um, I I'm pretty tied up this week. Well, now, whatever you have, I'll cover. How about tomorrow? You don't have anything tomorrow. I don't. That's right, I don't. Thank you, Suzanne. I'll return this favor. Say, 1230 Gallagher's. Look, Charlie, now, here's my card. If something comes up and you can't make it, just give me a call. Mr. Dodd, I know the inventory so much better than Suzanne. Don't you want to let me show you the back room? Why don't you do that? And that'll give them a chance to talk. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna keep his card. I'll call him later and cancel. I don't want to do it now. It's too soon. I might hurt his feeling. <laughs> what? It's his card. It says, help, please call police. I've been swallowed by a fat guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess I could have lunch. I mean, it's not like dinner. <laughs> It'd be just once. The delicate wash, the carpet shampoo, and the scrubby dub. That's what you want, right? Mm-hmm. How much I owe you? Uh, let's see, that comes to 13. 13 dollars? No, just 13. We're, we're not supposed to say dollars. You know, we're just supposed to say, you know, uh, that's five and that's three and a half. You know, it, it, it's in the manual. <laughs> I wonder why we're not supposed to say that. I don't know, I guess it's just a basic sales technique, you know, so people don't realize that they're spending actual money. <laughs> well, gee, you think that's honest? Oh, I wouldn't worry about it, you know, unless you tell somebody it's 13 and they give you 13 potatoes or something. <laughs> they give you the whole spiel here, don't they? Yeah, I couldn't bring myself to say some of that stuff, but Libby says I have to learn it, though. You enjoy doing this? Yeah, it's fun selling to my friends. I mean, everybody needs cleaning products anyway. <laughs> don't tell Libby, but I've been giving y'all a little discount. Oh, now, come on, Charlene, you don't have to do that. Oh, I'd like to. Libby wouldn't approve, though. She wants me to be, you know, more ambitious, Lady June wife. Well, I don't let her push you around. Well, she didn't push me around. I mean, this whole company is just as sweet as they can be. I went to my first local division meeting. I nearly got kissed to death. They're so excited I joined. <laughs> first then I told them that I was just thinking about doing it temporarily, and they all gave me these real disappointed looks like this. <laughs> you know, so then I told them I'd consider doing it a little bit longer, you know, and everybody squealed, and it just ended up in a great big group hug. I know in my head that this is a legitimate business organization with stockholders and executives and all that stuff, but, but when you describe it, all I can think of is sorority house hijinks. You know what it was a little bit like, and I hope this isn't blasphemous or anything, but it was a little bit like those Baptist revivals I used to go to, you know, where everybody just gets caught up in the feeling, like you're part of something bigger than yourself and you want to live up to it. Well, just remember, Charlene, we're not talking about the Lord here. We are talking about rug shampoo. <laughs> Joe, I know that. Well, you know, it's just, you're my friend, and I love you, and I don't want anybody pressuring you into anything. Well, they won't. I promise.
Miss Dolly Parton. Miss Parton, oh, I can't thank you enough for being in my dream. I'm your biggest fan. This is such an honor. Oh, well, thank you, Charlene. Please just call me Dolly. Okay. And actually, I was sent here to talk to you. You were? Yeah, you know, kind of like that angel and It's a Wonderful Life. Are you an angel? No, I'm just a movie star. I don't think I'd make angel if I died. I tell you, they couldn't have sent me anybody better. I've always felt this special bond with you, you know, because we're both country girls from big, poor families, and we both have blonde hair, and, and we both have, you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and you're from Poplar Bluff, Missouri. Oh my gosh, how'd you know that? Oh, I told you I know all about you. I also know that in a few hours you're gonna meet the best friend that you'll ever have, your daughter. Oh, I knew it. I knew it was gonna be a girl. I got a name all picked out too. Olivia Frazier Stillfield. Oh, I hope she grows up to be just like you. As far as I'm concerned, Miss Parton, you're the greatest hick who ever lived. Oh, well, thank you, Charlene. Actually, she is a little like me. Which part? She's no angel either. <gasps> Oh, gosh, I can't wait to meet her. Oh, but she can't come today. I'm not ready. Oh, it won't be today. It's tomorrow, January 1, 1990, the first day of the last decade of the entire 20th century. Oh, it's just so exciting, Charlene. Everything is changing. This whole world is just opening up. Well, that young could be anything. Wow. She could be the next leader of the free world. Well, that's right. She could, but she also could work at a car wash. Wow, a car wash. <laughs> That could be interesting, too. I'm just a little sad, though, you know, because whatever she is, you know, my, my grandma and my grandpa and my sister, Pat, who died, you know, they won't be here to see her. Oh, well, that's where you're wrong, Charlene. Because when Olivia comes into the world tomorrow, they'll be with her. I mean, everybody in your family that's gone on before you, everybody you've loved, you'll see them in her eyes and in her smile and in the way she walks. And when she takes her first step and says her first words, they'll be there. When she has a fever, three o'clock in the morning, when she gets caught in the rain, walking home from school, when she hits her first baseball, they'll be there. Are you sure? Yes. And when she's afraid of the dark, when she forgets to say her prayers, when the wind catches her voice on a warm summer day, they'll be there. Thank you, Dolly. This means so much to me. I love you so much. Oh, careful now, Charlene. Let's don't gouge each other. <laughs> oh, she's going to be a beautiful, healthy baby. She's a real firecracker. <laughs> you know, I have to go. I have to sing tonight. Bye, Dolly. Wait, wait. How, how'd you get to be so wise? Oh, I guess it just comes with being a star. We're able to see the world from a greater distance. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, that makes sense. Oh, boy, I feel so much better. Thank you, Dolly, for being in my dream. Oh, you're welcome. You just remember that tomorrow, when you meet your daughter, on the first day of the last decade of the entire 20th century, you'll be meeting the person that'll be holding your hand when it's your time to go. And even then, Charlene, she won't be alone. They'll be there. Bye, Dolly. I'll be seeing you. Oh, you count on that. Because I'm your guardian movie star. <laughs> Boy, she looks even better in person. Oh, darn, I forgot to ask her for her autograph. Oh, gosh. Olivia's coming in a few hours. It's almost the first day of the last decade of the entire 20th century. And Olivia's coming. I was just on my way to the talent show. Is it okay? Well, sure. Uh, the, the kids are upstairs, and, and Dan's still at work. Mavis, I, I've been so upset since the other night. I just can't stop thinking about you. Yeah, I, I've been thinking about our whole family. How much I miss Mom and Daddy. They wouldn't want you to live this way. You know, it's funny, but I haven't really felt alive in a long time. And I've forgotten what I used to be like. But every once in a while, there's this little voice inside me that says, hey, it's me. It's Mavis. I I'm still in here. But basically, I I've been dead. And then two things happened. 
this baby and seeing you again. Then all you have to do is get Jenny, Julie, and Kate and come with me now. After the show, we'll go to my house. You can all stay with Bill and me until we can find you an apartment. Oh, I can't afford to leave. Mavis, you can't afford not to. Now, there are places you can go for help, but first we have to get you out of here. I get an allowance. I don't have any money to move into an apartment. Well, you do now. This is from Bill and me, and the other check is from the rest of us for helping us rehearse. Charlene, this is too much. I mean, how could they do this? They don't even know me. It's just the way they are. That's why they're my friends. $50 is from Anthony. I don't... I don't know what to say. Just say you'll do it. Now, Mavis, I have to go. Now, if you won't come with me right now, I will be at the Arts Center until 11 o'clock. Just get your girls and come. Just take this first step. I will be by your side the whole way. I'm so ashamed. I don't know how I ever let it get to this point. It's okay. It's okay. Just, just remember, we don't have to take this. Because we're the rowdy girls. Remember? Yeah. I remember. Well, I think that it's some uh, ghostly incident. I think old Bob Cole here did it. I don't think that's very funny. Oh, come on, look at him up there all puffed up. <laughs> I wouldn't be saying that, Mary Jo. What do you think he's gonna do to me? <laughs> now, I know what y'all are thinking, and, and it's just silly. Look, that nail just fell out of that mortar there. House is all mine. Well, y'all want to sign the decorating papers? I have something they can get started. Uh, Charlie, uh, a few things have been happening around here. Nothing of any significance. We just wondered if there was some explanation. Oh, you mean like things moving around and that paint falling off the wall? Yes. Oh, there's a logical explanation for that. Yeah, I knew there would be. The house is haunted. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to see. Oh, please give her a kiss for me, OK? All right, bye. Olivia took her first step. Oh, oh hooray. Yeah, she's, she's getting so big. What's the matter, Charlene? I missed it. I'm missing everything. She's not a baby anymore. These are things I'll never, ever, ever get back again. Charlene, why don't you take the rest of the afternoon off and go on home and see Olivia walking? Thanks, Julie, but that's not going to solve anything. You saw that little girl with just hair. We were all talking about how her mom is never home. I've already made my decision. I just didn't know how to break it to y'all. Well, Charlene, you want to quit work? Yeah. No, she's not going to quit. We'll just call a temporary agency. Now, how much time do you think you'd need to be gone for? Oh, I don't know. Um, a, a year, maybe? A year? Oh, Charlie, come on. You don't want to go home for a year. Why you go crazy? She's not going to go. All right, let me ask you something. Just hypothetically speaking, if we did let you stay, and I'm not saying that we will, <laughs> Would you stop pulling rank on us? Hypothetically, yes. Would you get off our backs and stop talking about things that are on our heads? I can live with that. Maybe we better have a little conference. Allison, would you and Carlene excuse us, please? Why, yes, we certainly will, and thank you very much for asking. <laughs> What are y'all doing? We're voting on whether Allison can stay. Oh, count me in. <laughs> oh, Allison, I have an interest in this business, too. <laughs> Just gonna stand here and pretend to talk for 45 seconds and then go over there and tell her she's out. Yes, yes, yes! <laughs> you know, she's crying. I hate that. Come on, Charlene, be strong. I, I want the cash flow, too, but I'm being strong. <laughs> Now she's sobbing. Hey, she sobs all the time. She sobbed this morning when I ate the last of the Fruit Loops. 
Well, she's just so pitiful. I mean, what if she can't find another job? Charlene, I was out at 6 a.m. picking my underwear off a mulberry bush. Don't talk to me about pitiful. Other than the money, is there any plus in her staying? I mean it. I don't think she's going to be able to find another job. Charlene, I don't think that's a plus. I don't care, Mary Jo. I know there's probably lots of blind people in Atlanta, but there's way more dogs, too. I'm sure of it. Atlanta is a big dog town. Oh, come on, there are jobs out there. I know for sure there's an opening at the pit for the nude stock car races. Oh, I guess I am feeling a little sorry for her. I mean, she is a relative. Well, maybe we should call that space camp guy to come get her. Why do we always have to be so nice? I mean, this is why people take advantage of us all the time. Why can't we just be big, bad, mean business people just like everybody else? <laughs> That's why. Okay, now listen. It's apparent that everybody wants her gone, but nobody has the guts to make it official. Well, I have the guts, and I also have a mulberry thorn stuck in my underwear. <laughs> I'll be happy to do this. This is so exciting. <laughs> I hope you get it. Allison, <clears throat> I have been officially elected to tell you you're on probation. That was really good, it's Mr. Okay. Fanny Hosen, 24 hour ice cream delivery man. <laughs> this probation, of course, is subject to. Any conditions that we deem appropriate and may be revoked at any time. Well, actually, first, I'd like you to step outside for just a few minutes. No? Yes, that's right. Just, just right out there on the front porch. This is not a cruel trick, is it? Allison, you better go right now or this is going to go on your permanent record. <laughs> you know... I'm just so glad you all came to this decision. Otherwise, I'd have to sue the pants off you. We'll call you when we're ready. What are we gonna do, hide? <laughs> no! Rusty! We're going to do a little redecorating. Rusty, my man! Come over here, honey, and pull your pants up. We got work to do. Okay, you can come in now. Something's different. I can't put my finger on it. <laughs> I, I like it. <laughs> really. It's okay. Well, that's the spirit. <laughs> what do you think? My heart is full. 